Hey everybody, welcome back to my coverage of the Pog Champs 3 tournament. This is the first quarterfinals match in the championship bracket, XQC versus Sardosh. The second game, Sardosh did win the first game. If you missed that, you can check it up in the little info box up there. Come back and watch this video. But yes, XQC needs to win this game to take us to a tiebreaker and avoid elimination. Um, he is uh, the rating underdog and he has the black pieces. So it's going to take a lot of work for him, from him, but uh, it is possible. So let's just see what happened. Sardosh starts with D4 and we have D5 from XQC and Sardosh goes for a London system like he has been. Uh, like he has been doing. We have Knight C6 now from XQC and E3 from Sardosh. E6 and now Bishop G3 from Sardosh. Um, more active would have been instead of moving this bishop, which you've already moved, uh, a move like c4 or knight to f3. But bishop g3, it's uh, it's sort of part of the London setup to sort of just bring this bishop back to g3. Um, so I guess it, it is a fine move as well. It's just not the most principled move. We have bishop d6 now from xqc looking to trade off white's London bishop and now f4 from Sardosh not looking to trade off that London bishop. However, this is not a very good move, in my opinion, from Sardosh because uh, it now blocks your London bishop. So it's kind of like, well, what was the point of developing it in the first place? It's just looking at this pawn now. Uh, and it also makes your E pawn very weak. It gives up the E4 square. So a pawn can never attack this E4 square now. Uh, black might get a piece there later on. And also now this E4 pawn is backwards. So you can never advance it to a square uh, that is defended by a... a a friendly white pawn and also black has very good control over this e4 square so th this e4 pawn is just going to be a long-term weakness for the rest of the game and um, not only that uh, you, you have weakened this diagonal uh, this diagonal is is sort of fine because there are two pawns on there but you, you know it's just always something to be aware of when you push this f pawn so uh, not the most accurate move by Sardosh but we have it we have now knight f6 from xqc and knight d2 from Sardosh, continuing development, and now castles from xqc. We have knight g to f3, continuing development from Sardosh, and rook to e8. Knight e5 now from Sardosh, and um, better would have been simply uh, developing this bishop, but knight e5 is a totally fine move as well. And now uh, xqc, we've seen him, he loves to go for those trades, and he does here. We saw him make this mistake of taking with the knight in his game versus Pokimane and walking into this pawn fork when the pawn recaptured. But this time he does not make the same mistake and instead captures with the bishop. However, this really isn't the best trade because um, after f takes e5, now once white castles kingside, this f pile will be half open. And also now this e3 pawn is uh, much less of a weakness because it's going to be hard for black to open the e file. Uh, you know, before Black may have had uh, some ideas of uh, pushing e5 sometime later and opening the e file and having a lot of pressure on this e3 square, that's going to be much harder for Black to do now uh, with this pawn on e5. So uh, definitely not the best positional trade from XQC, but a trade nonetheless. And we have knight to d7 from XQC, saving his knight, and now c3 from Sardosh, just solidifying his center. Uh, and here we have f6 from XQC, just looking to break down Sardosh's center. However, you are sort of exposing your king, uh, and, and Black's pieces overall here are just very cramped. I think a knight to f8 would have been a, a better move here, maybe looking to bring the knight over to g6, and um, or even knight to e7. Uh, you, you kind of, you just want to have a, a bit of protection around your king. Uh, you, you don't really want to be making these weaknesses around your king with f6 uh, so but we do have f6 by xqc and now a, a very nice move from sardosh we have bishop to h4 now pinning this f pawn to the queen so the f pawn cannot uh, take this e pawn uh, xqc it does not like that so he plays g5 breaking the pin and this is just really exposing your king so your king is not going to be safe at all when you play this g5 move and um, th i think this has been a common theme among the punk champs competitors where they don't really understand the long-term weaknesses of uh, like exposing your king and making these uh, positional weaknesses like we saw with this f4 move from Sardosh. Um, and I think that's that's fairly common among beginners in general. Uh, and that's that's kind of the difference between a beginner slash intermediate player and, you know, like an advanced expert player is sort of recognizing uh, long-term advantages and uh, disadvantages. That's not the only thing that separates those levels of skill, but it, I think it is one of the main uh, things. 
Uh, so we do not actually see Sardosh move this bishop, but instead he plays a fancy move in return. Queen g4 getting another piece into the game, um, which it, it, this is actually a very nice move from Sardosh. It, it does allow a very spicy tactic from XQC, uh, starting with this knight sacrifice with knight d takes e5. And uh, the idea is after you take this knight, then uh, black takes with the other knight and you're attacking this queen. So it, if the queen moves, uh, then if the, if the queen moves off this g file, then you take the bishop. But if the queen moves to g3, now you might think, okay, uh, I can move my king off the h file and then this bishop is trapped. I can take the bishop next turn. However, you would actually not want to do this. This would be a huge blunder as black if you played king to h8 uh, because now black, or, or sorry, now white can simply take this pawn and once you take back, you drop the knight on uh, e5 since this f6 pawn was defending that knight. Uh, so instead, you would want to simply play a move uh, instead of king to h8, you would simply play a move like uh, knight to f7 and now you're threatening to play king to h8 and um, g takes h4 so uh, once again if the queen moves off the g file you can immediately take this bishop and if the queen tries to go to g4 now you have this move e5 a discovered attack on the queen from the bishop and once the queen moves again uh, we can once again go for this king h8 and g takes h4 idea and we will regain our piece as black uh, so this queen g4 move from Sardosh does allow this knight sacrifice tactic, but it is a very complex variation, so will XQC see it? Unsurprisingly, he doesn't. He plays h6, which is the next best move uh, after this tactic. If you're not going to play this tactic, h6 is going to be the next best move. Um, and the game continues. Uh, here, I think queen h5 would have been a very interesting try from Sardosh, uh, because Sardosh, he only needs a draw here. So he, if he can somehow get some perpetual check with like queen g6 and uh, you know just checking forever and the, the king cannot escape the checks then uh, that he would win the match because he already won the first game if he draws this game he would be uh one and a half to half and he would win the match so uh, xqc would need to play something like, like queen uh, king g7 here defending uh, both g6 and h7 or g6 and h6 and after bishop to d uh, bishop d3 and f5 um and a move like g4 from sardosh you know, it's going to be very hard to defend as black. So uh, we could have seen something like this from Sardosh, but Sardosh does not go for this queen h5 move. Instead, he simply plays the immediate bishop d3, just trying to get more pieces into the mix. Uh, once again, XQC does have this knight sacrifice available, but instead he plays the much more natural move, f5. And once again, Sardosh had this option to go queen h5 uh, and look to play like g4, uh, rook f1, or maybe even rook g1. Uh, but instead, we see queen g3, so uh, maybe Sardosh was uh, worried about losing this bishop still. Uh, and here we have king h8 from xqc, so now threatening to take this bishop. And uh, the, the bishop is trapped, so it cannot move anywhere. Uh, we do have a knight to f3 now from Sardosh, looking to bring another piece into the attack, which is very good. And after g takes h4, um, we have knight takes h4. So xqc is up a piece here, but his king safety is very bad and uh, it, it, anything could still happen. Uh, we have queen g5 now from xqc. He is up in material and on the defense, so he's looking to get some trades in, and uh, now castles queen side from Sodosh. I think queen f2, simply avoiding this queen trade uh, for the time being may have been a possibility. I, I don't know. It, I mean, black has already sort of defended here, but um, it, you know, you, you kind of also want to keep as many pieces on the board as possible when you're down in material like this. But we have a castle's queen side, and XQC definitely goes for this queen trade. Queen takes g3, h takes g3, and now rook g8 going after these double isolated pawns. Sardosh defends with rook to h3. Um, maybe this was not uh, even worth defending. Like, here, Sardosh could have played a move like knight to f3, and the idea is, now if you take my g pawn, I'll take your h pawn. Um, but we have rook to h3 from Sardosh, uh, and now knight to b6 from xqc. We have bishop e2 getting this bishop on a more active diagonal, and bishop d7 from xqc, just getting his last minor piece into the game. We now have g4 from Sardosh, and um, th this, this actually just loses a pawn from Sardosh. So I think Sardosh saw here that xqc was attacking this square two times, but I think he figured... Uh, after f takes g4, which xqc did play, he could play rook g3 and regain this pawn. However, I think Sardosh missed this move 
h5, which uh, xqc did play, and now this rook is actually trapped. You, you can't really do anything. You'd have to sacrifice this e-pawn uh, to get it out on this e3 square, and, and it's going to take a, a very long time to get your pieces reorganized. So this rook is sort of trapped for the time being. Uh, much better would have been a move like rook h to h1, um, and just you, you just lose this pawn here. But we have rook g3 instead, and I, I, I think if you don't see this h5 move from black, then this rook g3 move makes a lot of sense. Um, but XQC did see this h5 move, so he plays h5. He's still up a piece, so uh, will he convert this or will he blunder this back to Sardoche? We have bishop d3 now from Sardoche and rook a to f8. Um, here, I think a much better move was this bishop d3 move. It, it's just looking to untangle, right? This knight can't come here, or it can't come here, it can't come here. So X, uh, Sardoche wants to bring the knight here, and in order to do that, he needs to defend the square again. So what you can do here as black is prevent white from bringing their knight out. And now this knight is stuck, this rook is stuck. So white is really only playing with two pieces here, their uh, d rook and their bishop. And um, if you can hold this, then uh, it's going to be very hard for white to defend. So knight e7, just restricting this uh, knight and this rook, definitely would have been a uh, much better move here from xqc. But we have rook a to f8, just getting his rook on the open file which is a fine move as, as well. However, this does allow uh, <laughs> knight g6 now, which is a fork. Um, so maybe rook a to f8 wasn't the best move uh, because of this fork. Uh, and xqc realizes that he's getting forked, so he sacrifices his rook for this knight. And um, after bishop takes g6, now, you, as, uh, as one of the commentators Anna Rudolph described, you have to find this very dank tactic as xqc. You have to play knight to e7, uh, and the idea is your h-pawn is hanging, uh, but it, now if white takes this h-pawn, now you have knight to f5 attacking the rook. Uh, and if white plays rook to f1 to pin this knight to avoid um, capturing this rook, now we can simply play a move like rook to d8. And if rook takes g4 now, uh, then we have knight takes e3, a fork on the two rooks. So uh, this was the tactical sequence. Pretty hard to see, but... Um, uh, it is the only winning continuation here for black because once this h-pawn falls, uh, you know, the rook's coming to the open file. Your, your king is not going to be very safe and white is just picking up more material. Uh, bishop e8 looks like it might work, but it doesn't actually work because after uh, it does defend this h-pawn uh, through an x-ray, but after bishop takes e8 and rook takes e8, rook h1 and this pawn will be lost. Once again, the king's safety is just uh, too bad and white is picking up more material and just getting back into this game. So white could have definitely gotten back into this game if black played a move like uh, bishop to e8, or the move that xqc did play in the game, which was king to g7, not even attempting to defend this h-pawn. Uh, and now white is totally winning after bishop takes h5, because now this pawn is going to fall again, and uh, white's going to get their rook back into the game. They'll have this passed g-pawn, and uh, we have a game again. We have king h6 now from xqc, and uh, this is even uh, this, this is just a terrible move because uh, your your king is just going to be very exposed. And also, after even rook takes g4, your now your king is cut off. Uh, there's ideas of, of rook h1 and uh, you know this uh, checkmate on the h file from white. So definitely very uh, very tricky to play here as xqc. But we do have king to h6, and now. Rook h1 as Sardosh. I mean, uh, r really, there's a ton of winning moves here. Rook takes g4, it wins. Bishop takes g4, wins. And Rook h1, all three of those move wins. And we have Rook h1 from Sardosh. And now we have King g5 from xqc. Uh, and this simply walks into a mate in two, which uh, Sardosh does go for after Rook takes g4 check. And after King h5, we have uh, Rook to f1, which is checkmate. If the king had gone to the h file here, uh, with king to h6, we could have bishop to e8, and this is discovered checkmate. Uh, but we have this checkmate with the king on f5 instead. So Sardosh takes the second game, shuts out xqc, and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty good chess played from both players. Definitely a very interesting match uh, here, the first quarterfinals match in the championship bracket. And uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. So here is the Bracket Sardosh moves on to the semifinals. XQC is eliminated. He will play the winner of the Ludwig versus Logic match and Benji Fishy versus Dineggs. That match is happening later today, so I will uh, be covering that match 
uh, when those games happen. Uh, and yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about this game or this match. So congratulations to Sardosh, and we'll probably see XQC in PogChamps 4 uh, coming back stronger than ever. So thank you for watching. Check out my PogChamps 3 playlist. It's up there. And check out the uh, another video over there. It's going to be chess related. So uh, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on all things chess. And thank you for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.